live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. As the Liberal Party searches for its new leadership, Bridget Archer was today asked whether she would consider standing for the deputy position to stop a potential lurch to the right in her party. Potentially, I guess, but um, I think that uh, we, we must do everything uh, to resist that. The former Georgetown mayor is a heartbreaker once again. Ross Hart has conceded he will not win the seat of Bass, but did not offer a theory on why There are lost. established procedures for dealing with these things. It's not for me, in the shadow of the election, to undertake uh, that uh, inquiry. Brian Mitchell has maintained his lead of 800 votes as counting continues in Lyons. To other news now, an elderly woman has died in hospital after she lost control of her vehicle in Sandy Bay this morning. The car the 83-year-old was driving slammed into a retirement village building after failing to negotiate, negoti navigate a bend in the road. Sorry, no one else was injured. Tasmania's tourism operators are set to benefit from a cash injection earmarked in the state government's upcoming budget. $10 million is hoped to aid businesses as they begin to bounce back from a challenging two years of trade. Home to some of the most spectacular scenery, Tasmania's billion dollar tourism industry sells itself. <laughs> but the ride through COVID has been bumpy for operators like Pennycott Wilderness Journeys. I think um, when the pandemic hit, well, we actually wondered whether we would survive. It became very, very tough. They're now forecasting smooth sailing into the future with an additional $10 million allocated in the state budget to accelerate the sector's recovery. We're in a very competitive space and that's why we need to continue to drive investment in the tourism industry, uh, continue to target uh, key domestic markets. And that extra $10 million will really give the opportunity to get the people to Tasmania and then let us get on with our job. Enticing more holiday makers from all corners of the country is a core part of the plan. So we're looking at investing in our platforms, in our digital tools to ensure that we have a close connection with our visitors all the way from when they're dreaming about a holiday to Tasmania to when they're actually on ground experiencing it. The latest data is showing strong signs of bouncing back. Visitors spend now at the highest for any March quarter on record. I actually think we're in for a real boomer of a year and we've been very lucky in the last since December to now to have good, good numbers coming in. Tourism is a vital industry for uh, Tasmania, generating some $2 billion annually and also employing some over 33,000 uh, Tasmanians. The state is yet to regain its strong international visitor market, but with federal labour now in power, tourism advocates are keen to see them follow through on a promise to strengthen the Hobart Airport runway. Obviously having one stop or no stops does make it much more advantageous when you are choosing a, a destination. Although the opposition isn't convinced the government's really doing the hard work. The fact that the Premier is out today spruiking this as though it's new money when he announced it a year ago at the last state election just proves that he has no new ideas for this state. Grace Evans, 7 Tasmania News. Another person has died from COVID-related illness in Tasmania, bringing the state's toll to 71. Health authorities say a woman in her 80s died in the north of the state. 723 new infections were recorded overnight. Meanwhile, active cases have dropped, sitting just under 6,000, with 51 people being treated for COVID in hospital and one remaining in intensive care. Tasmanians are no closer to knowing how the Marinus link will be paid for after years of negotiations between governments. Exclusive documents show major hurdles are still in the path of it progressing as state and federal governments quibble over funding. It's the biggest energy infrastructure project in Tasmanian history, but one question remains unanswered. Who will pay to build the $3.5 billion Marinus link? According to the state government, it can't proceed unless mainlander users can be charged, placing the entire project under a cloud. A December 7 letter obtained under Right to Information shows Peter Gutwin asking Scott Morrison for law changes to allow it. The former PM replying two weeks later saying it won't happen before 2024 when a final decision needs to be made. In a heavily redacted letter, the federal government offers to help pay for the project. It's unclear what was offered and why it was knocked back. 
Only that Scott Morrison arrived in April 2022 to announce $75 million for design and sign an MOU. Insiders have called the discussions highly competitive. A government spokesperson said in a statement, we make no apologies for getting the best deal for Tasmania. Labor MHA Dean Winter says the government needs to be transparent about its negotiations. Hundreds of millions of dollars in consultant fees, um, in more reports about the project, but we still don't have a development application, a funding for the project and no idea um, who's going to pay and that's the critical question. With Gutwin and Morrison no longer in office, it's unclear if negotiations are back to square one. However, during the election campaign, Federal Labor pledged to make significant investments in the grid. Marinus Link could be one of the projects in line. Also in the documents, Will Hodgman's original schedule. Delivery by the middle of the 2020 decade. That timeline now seems a world away. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. Paramedics are pleading with the state government to get serious about reducing ramping across the state's hospitals. Their union has released new data which shows average ramping and response times are continuing to rise. Figures they say can be the difference between life and death. Cam Johnson has been a paramedic for more than two decades, working across the world. He's seen the impact of ramping on the job getting worse. And it slowly got worse to the point now this is the worst I've ever seen it in 20 years. Tasmania has the worst waiting times in the country uh, and it's getting worse. New figures from the performance dashboard lay bare the stress on the system. Daily average ramping hours jumping by more than 50% in the last 12 months, while emergency response times have grown by three minutes on average over the last eight years to nearly 15 minutes. However, in 10% of cases, patients can wait close to 35. The union says every minute counts. That unfortunately does mean the difference at times between life or death and it's simply not acceptable. The demands are increasing. An ageing population, of course, uh, our health system needs to continually improve. Deteriorating relationships between paramedics, nurses and doctors is a growing side effect. Often um, uh, points of contention over care in the, in, the, in the corridor, there's robust discussions at times about patient care. The government says increasing support remains a key priority. We continue to invest in those key areas of need, uh, such as that first response in Ambulance Tasmania, our paramedic workforce. But the union says ramping can only be reduced if there's also investment inside Tasmania's hospitals. They're calling for more beds, more staff and competitive salaries to make Tasmania's health system a more attractive place to work in. The figures, if they get worse, it is very dire for Tasmanians. Oh, I know people have left the field. People, people have found other work or um, definitely people have moved into state. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. A coronial investigation will take place in the coming weeks after a death in a Tasmanian prison overnight. The Department of Justice has confirmed a male inmate passed away in Risdon. Director of Prisons Ian Thomas today offered his condolences to the family and friends of the man. The department says it is standard practice for the coroner to look into any death that occurs in a correctional facility. Tasmania's own Ariane Titmus is going down in history with a world record win at the Australian Swimming Championships. Her achievements paving the way for other young state swimmers. She's the golden girl of Tasmanian swimming who has just rewritten record books. She's got it! World record has been terminated here! People think that when you become Olympic champion that means that you can become complacent but more than anything I think it's inspired me more. Flying through lane four and clocking a time of 3 minutes 56.4 seconds, Ariane narrowly blitzed Katie Ledecky's six-year benchmark in the women's 400-metre freestyle event, a legendary achievement not even she saw coming. I never thought that at this meet, post the Olympics, I'd be swimming faster than at Olympic trials and the Olympic Games. The athlete ironically chose not to compete in the World Championships for fear of being underprepared and she's sticking to her decision, focusing her energy on Australia's Commonwealth Games effort. Just doing the one big meet this year is probably going to work in my favour. Ariane will be making a splash in Birmingham come late July alongside 45 other swimmers. 
The team is creating a wave of inspiration for young athletes, including Matilda Smith, who at just 17 years old made three finals at the Nationals. To be able to break a world record is really amazing and I have a lot of respect for those older guys. She also broke the Tasmanian record in the 50 metre breaststroke. We train for two hours each session and then I'm pretty much straight to school, straight after training and then back here in the night. She's half a second off the Commonwealth Games team this year so uh, she's only going to get better as she gets older. Matilda has her own hopes of one day making it to the Olympics. Brianna Boylan, 7, Tasmania News. Work has begun on an upgrade to one of Northern Tasmania's major health facilities. The state government today confirming the Mersey Community Hospital redevelopment is now underway. More than $30 million will be spent across the facility on improvements to outpatient clinics and operating theatres, while a new elective day surgery centre will also be built. Construction is due to be completed by the end of 2024. High definition may be the norm for Tasmanian television viewers today, but it's light years ahead of what we saw in the past. In tonight's special feature, we're taking a look at the huge changes in technology over this station's 60-year history, starting with the biggest of them all, the shift to colour. For over a decade, black and white saturated the airwaves, but in March 1975, television changed forever. Colour heralded the biggest and most enduring change to what we see on our screen. At last, we could distinguish teams with ease. And the match here at Youngtown this afternoon, uh, first time we've had football in colour, and it's between Clarence and East Launceston. Fashion popped and made the search for Miss Tasmania come to life, and local news never felt so close. But the technology cost millions and was an enormous engineering feat. Viewers faced problems too. Coloured TVs, some Australian made back then, were in short supply. The demand for colour has exceeded expectations. Other products are suffering a rather low demand at the moment. While the door had opened to the bright lights of colour, film from outside Tasmania still had to be flown in before it could be broadcast. But in 1988, a huge step was taken to overcome the tyranny of distance. A new satellite dish meant more news, sport and programming from across the world could come in almost instantly. The TVRO, or Television Receive Only Dish, will enable TAS TV to receive satellite signals originating from the major Australian commercial networks simultaneously, instead of one signal at a time through the microwave link across Bass Strait. The late 80s also saw the station spread its wings, broadcasting to the Bass Strait Islands for the first time. And then with the flick of a switch here on King Island, transmission begins, much to the delight of the locals. Three decades after that switch turned on, another switched off. Rushing for amazing deals. Analog, the main signal for half a century, bit the dust in 2013. By then though, Tasmanians had become accustomed to digital. Plus, widescreen, which began broadcasting after the Sydney Olympics when the station acquired 16 by 9 cameras from the Games. But one thing has never changed. Mount Barrow in the north and Mount Wellington in the south have been feeding the pictures Tasmanians have seen for decades. A lifetime's link to the world. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. And our series continues tomorrow night with big money, a big bribe and an even bigger downfall. Don't miss the story of ENT, Edmund Rouse and the shift to statewide broadcasting. Australia's Antarctic personnel are preparing to get down on the floor and support some of the country's biggest mental health charities. They're taking part in the push-up challenge, committing to doing 3,139 over 24 days beginning June 1. Explorers getting some extra practice in this week in cold conditions, slonging it out in the snow. Funds raised will go to Lifeline and Movember. Kingborough's never made a state league grand final, but 2022 could well be the year. The Tigers have now claimed the best of the South to be second on the table. Ben Donnelly stood tall down back, keeping Clarence's Colin Garland to just two goals. He's a little bit bigger than me, but um, just try and position myself the best I can. And Speaking to Trent through the week, like how to play on him and just watch his game a fair bit. The way Lauderdale and Clarence move the ball has... Made, made us speed up as well, so I think some of our ball movement has been really good going into our forwards. The Tigers could claim another Southern Scout this weekend when they play North Hobart. And that brings us now to the Crips TSL Player of the Year votes after nine rounds. 
Well done to Brodie Powfryman on top for the Blues in that enormous win over Glenorchy. The man of the hour, Ben Donnelly, adds handsomely to his player of the year tally. And another good game for Jack Event, three votes for the North Launceston player. Jack's back into second behind Brodie Powfryman, but tied with Eddie Cole. Colin Garland, Joby Harper and Sam Siggins are on eight. Launceston's Hugh McKay made it a clean sweep in the Pro Open class in round three of the Tasmanian Motocross Championship in Bridport. Angus Pearce won all six of his races in the 125 and 250cc classes. Jacob Brewer is ahead in the 85ccs and Holly Jeeves is winning the ladies class. And a Tassie Tiger has a handy haul to finish his IPL season. Nathan Ellis claimed three wickets for 40 runs and even found himself on a hat-trick. Chips it. Should be another one. Two and two for Nathan Ellis. Here's Punjab Kings, Kings defeated Hyderabad by five wickets in the dead rubber to wrap up the IPL season. Good evening. Hobart and Devonport 15 degrees today. Launceston reached 16 and Burnie 14. We started with a minus 6 at Lyawini and peaked at 17 on King Island. Smithton, St Helens, Friendly Beaches and Strawn all 16. Flinders Island, Low Head and Grove 15. Ooze 13 today and Lyawini made to double figures. Just. Some cloud today, mostly about the northwest, but sunny conditions over most of Tasmania. Storm clouds sat over south western WA with a northwest band moving over central Australia. Some scattered low cloud over the eastern parts. Tomorrow a slow moving high slides to the east and inland trough sits over Queensland, a series of troughs over western Australia. Winds light and variable over the east and south with north easterlies at 10 to 20 knots over western waters. The only warning is for the cool night bringing a frost in the morning. That's uh, a frost warning for the central north Midlands and upper Derwent Valley. Hobart tomorrow expecting a top of 14 degrees and mostly sunny. Partly cloudy for Adventure Bay, 13 the top, minus 4 overnight for Taralea but a sunny 12 later on. Launceston 15 and mostly sunny. Devonport 15 as well, 15 the top for Bridport. Burnie mostly sunny in 15, 16 the high for Strawn, a nice day for Marawar as well, 16 degrees. 15 the high for St Helens, Swansea 15 as well, 16 for Whitemark, all expecting fine clear conditions. On Wednesday another morning frost and local fog, a few showers developing over the north in the afternoon. Showers extending statewide during Thursday but not much over the southeast. And on Friday another wettish day with showers more frequent over the north and west. Showers easing from Perth, cloudy for Adelaide, a sunny 19 in Melbourne. Showers forecast for Sydney and Brisbane. Mostly clear in Hobart, actually clear in Launceston and clear in Devonport, eight degrees is everywhere. And Kim, sorry about the uh, quality of your voice tonight, but uh, it's still recovering from too much yelling at football umpires on a Friday night. What are we going to do about them? You know? Dear, oh dear. Sorry about the swans, but very sorry. And well, that's all we have time for tonight. Enjoy your evening. Good night.